So I actually feel, so I'm Oliver Rickard, I'm one of the product managers at Highwire. I actually feel like I'm doing, uh, uh, my, my colleague Oliver Hamilton, who is another one of the product managers, might be orchestrating this behind the scenes because he's running a webinar, as Jim mentioned earlier, all about our new alert service. And I'm not going to show you anything about our alerts, new alert service. That's all going to be in the webinar. And this talk is really about why you should care about that. So, so I'm kind of before that. If you care about this stuff, go and see the webinar. But why do you care? You're going to watch this. Find out. So the whole point of really is, is that our new alert service enables you to drive engagements with your users in a much better way than we've ever done before. And there's two, there's two parts to this. One is that alerts are important to users. They're a, still a really key way that, that users, researchers, academics get access to content. And on the other hand, alerts are important to publishers because they're a way for you to get contact with your users, to understand who your users are, what do they want. And the idea is that our new alert service enables you to do that in a way you haven't been able to do up until now. So the first bit of this talk is all around why email is important. Email, we've had it for ages. Maybe everyone's a bit bored of it. And there's lots of new social media channels. You can do this and that, whatever. But actually, when it comes down to it, if you ask researchers, like, like the, that was done in this study here, uh, Carol Tenop here in March 2019, what are, the, what are the social media channels that are important to you? What matters? And it turns out that the email is the number two of all of these things. Slightly weird data here. On the, on the right, you can see that, that one would be the best and five would be the worst. And it turns out that email is, is the second lowest number on there. So email matters to researchers. They care about this stuff. And this is another study, so, um, Gardner and Inga study from 2018. And the, the question they asked is, how did you discover the last journal article that you looked at? How did you find it? And of course, search is very, very high. That's fair enough. But what's interesting, if this works, Oops, I went too quick, giving away all my secrets. Cool, they're all at different speeds. I love it. Um, what's interesting is that following a link from a journal talk is, is, is the number two. So if you throw away Google and all that stuff, then the next thing people are doing is they're looking at their journal talks. This is still a really key way in which pe people are accessing content. And after that, there's another one which is email-based, which is reading an article someone sent to you in an email. Some very simple thing that might be from a publisher, but it might also be from you know, colleagues or friends or whatever. So your emails are still a place that users are getting access to content. And then finally, there's another one which is email, which is from saved search alerts. So, so if you've had users who've run searches on, on a platform and they've, they've saved that search, and then they set up an alert for that, that's another way in which they're getting access. So what all this means, is, is emails are still really important. This was another question that, that Gardner and Inga asked, which is when you need to search for an article, where do you start that search? Now, of course, most people are going to start that on Google, or on the internet, whatever. But there's another group of people who are finding, do, running that search on journal talk alerts. So they've got a store of all the alerts that they've received over time, and they've kept that in a folder somewhere. And they're actually searching through that for material on a certain subject. We hadn't anticipated that was a new one for us. We hadn't spotted that. In fact, that's geographically specific as well. So it's in Africa that loads of people are doing this. For some reason, that's a way. So, so they, they, these alerts aren't just um, uh, temporary. They, they go on. They persist. They, they live in these people's inboxes um, over time. What's the takeaway from all this? Researchers are in their inbox. It matters. That, that's a place where they're sitting day in, day out. They're sitting there. What, what hits their inbox really, really matters. So, you're going to want to get your alerts right. And they're a, they're a really important way for publishers to get into the mind of, of, of the users. So what types of alerts do we have, and, and, and how many are there, and so on? So uh, as of March 2019, there's over 4 million people who are signed up for alerts on the Highwire platform. So it's a lot of people. So you should care about what goes into those alerts. There's, other, there's lots of different types. So from these stats, you can see that the journal talk alert is the, is the big deal here. But all these other types are also valid. And, and in terms of, as a publisher, how much effort you put into configuring these different alerts, altering these alerts, sending them out, et cetera, you can use this data here to decide how much effort you put into those, those different areas. But yeah, journal talk alerts is still a massive deal. How many alerts going out? Well, this first quarter of this year, over 15 million. So 
again, you've got a lot of chance here of, of, of getting into your, your users, your researchers, and, and, and affecting what they're doing. So it, it really matters what you do with this stuff. There's lots of potential for engagement. That's your takeaway number two. In fact, you can just look at the red slides and ignore the bits in between if, if you want to just, just focus down. Next, next group of things here is all about why should you care? You're a publisher, why does it matter? In what way can alerts help you? Um, I think if you, if you do quarterly business reviews with Highwire, you'll have seen this table before. This is a, this is a table that uh, lists all your stakeholders, internal and external, what your business drivers are. And we use this as, as a, a, a vendor for you to, to, so that, to help you to understand to help us rather, to understand what your needs are, what matters to you. And what we've highlighted here in yellow is all the things that we think the alert service can affect. So ways in which if you can drive better engagement through the alert service, these things on, 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 that are in yellow are the things that, that might change. You might get better revenue, you might be able to strengthen your brand, um, uh, retaining authors and so on. So again, there's a lot of ways in which the alerts system that, that we've improved can um, affect your business. So uh, as uh, Jim mentioned earlier, the new alert service uses SendGrid. So SendGrid are quite big and send quite a lot of email. In fact, when Jim mentioned them earlier on, he missed the zero off. Um, it's, they don't send 5 billion, they send 50 billion emails a year. So there's a lot of email going on here. And well, that's not just great for us because it means that our alert surface is based on a very, very reliable system. We know that the email's gonna go out and that's all great. It also means that SendGrid have got a lot of information on which to build a science of email. They have tons and tons and tons of data, so much data. So they can do really, really great analysis of what matters um, and, and how you can, you can configure your emails to get, them, um, to get people to look at them, because otherwise, what's the point? So what they've done is they've created this uh, benchmark report, which is a big report of, of email. And you can go into here and look at all the stats of, of what matters to, to try and make your users read email, open email, etc. And they reckon that most internet users in the world are, some, are in some way um, represented in this report. Give you an example of this. So uh, there's a few key statistics. Jim mentioned a few of these earlier. They're, they're kind of perhaps obvious, but we'll just go through them. One is how many people are going to open the emails? That's your open rate. The next one is how many people are going to click on a link in one of the emails? That's your uh, click-through rate. And then there's the ratio of those two, three, those two things, your click to open rate. And of course, there's your unsubscribe rate as well. So these are your numbers that, care, that you care about. So using our new alert system, you'll be able to get access to these numbers. You'll be able to change your emails, configure, configure your alerts, and then see how they affect these numbers, because this is your bottom line, this is what matters, this is what matters to your business. If you can increase these numbers, then you're doing really well. In fact, there were some numbers um, mentioned earlier that were, that were good in one of the talks where someone was hitting 40% on, on an open rate, and that's, that's really great, that's a, that's a good number. So this is an example, it's, it's quite hard to read, but this is a, an example of one of the things from that, from that report. Um, there's tons and tons of stats. This is just one example that's, that's in there. So on the left-hand side, you can see there's the number of characters in the subject line of an email, and then the green bars, can you tell green and blue? Is that exactly the same on there? Anyway, these bars here are your um, open rate. So as you can see, as, as the number of characters goes up, your open rate goes down, and then it goes up again. I don't know why I haven't read the report in that much detail, but, but there's a, some interesting trends there that you can look at and find stuff out. There's also this really weird thing that the click-through rate is basically the same, doesn't matter, except in the middle, where it's really, really massively high. I don't know why that is. Again, you can look into the report. There's, there's, on the SendGrid um, site, there's a ton of resources all around all this stuff, so you want to dive into the detail and find out why is this going on, what's this about, and does it affect me? It might not affect you. That spike there might be in a different sector, might not be publishing, but it might be. So you can dive in and, and, and find out all this data and, and use it to then, by using our new alert service, configure your alerts and, and, and increase your, your engagement. So yeah, talking about the, the different sectors, it's different across the sectors, and for some sectors, the, you know, the, the email is more important than others. It turns out publishing is the highest. So in, if you look at these rates here, the open rate is 33% for publishing in general, and that's the highest one. So you guys should care. This, this stuff matters. It's a really good way to get access to your things. I think, I think it's true for all of them, yeah, that, that it's the highest rate. Red slide. 
Oops. Oh, I see what everyone means about the animation now. Um, email science can be used to tune your alerts. So you can use all this data. You can go and look. You can find out what the science is. You can find out what the dimensions of your emails are that matter. Use all those and change those and play with those and then hopefully get better rates, more people reading your, reading your alerts. How do we do that? What, how do you actually do that tuning? Well, the first thing you would do is, is look at your rates as they are at the moment. So establish that baseline, say, OK, our open rate is this, our click-through rate is this. What are we going to do about it? What and what matters? And what's high and what's low? So once you look at your own rates, you can then look at what the high wire rates are. Generally, we can give you those. And you can say, OK, well, actually, our open rate is better than most people at high wire or, or, or not as good and so on. So that's what that is, that compared to high wire benchmark data. You can then research the SendGrid community. There's a whole lot of resources out there over how you might want to improve your rates and, and change things around. So you can look at that research. I've got a few things on the next slide that, that, that I can point you at. Um, but it's the kind of thing like on those, those previous slides. So you can find out what is all that data, what matters. You can plan your attack. Say, OK, we're going to change this. And actually, with the, with the new SendGrid-based alerting system, you can do A-B testing. So you can send out some of your alerts in, in version A, and then you can make some changes and send some other ones out in version B, and then see what your rates are and have a sense of, OK, actually, if we reduce the subject line or we include more articles in the, in the talk alert or we include a little intro or change the header or whatever it is, because you've got this new self-service alerting configuration system, you can make those changes and see how they affect your rates. And then see what happens, and hopefully things get better. Uh, here, here are some of those, those resources, but there's lots more on, on the same grid site. You can go and have a look and obviously talk to me. Um, and absolutely, my colleague, Oliver Hamilton, who's running this webinar in July that, that Jim mentioned, he will actually show you how the new SendGrid system works, how the new alerting system works, and also explain how we can deploy it out to you guys, and, and you can actually have a little play with it. So there's the final red slide of all the other red slides put together. That's how to get from alerting to engagement. Researchers still using email. They're still in their inbox. There's loads of emails being sent all over the place. There are lots of ways in which, which alerts can help you as publishers to get that better engagement with your users. And now that we have this new alerting system, you can use this email science that's out there with all this data to configure your email to, to suit your particular business needs. That's it. Any of you have, or, or your organizations, have recently engaged in an email uh, a marketing upgrade? That is where you've, uh, as we talked about with um, Society for Neuroscience this morning, uh, they took on email marketing professionally. Uh, have any of you done that? Uh, we'd like to, I'd like to start getting some best practices going. Uh, for instance, that slide on the number of characters in the, mm. uh, is it the subject line? Subject line, yeah. Uh, that kind of thing, if, if we know what actually produces the best results, we should share that. And indeed, that, 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 um, the, the neuroscience example was interesting because they had to go to this very, very manual process because the kind of automated thing wasn't working. And I think what we're hoping as, as vendors is that now you can use the automated process, but you have a lot more control over how it works. And, and maybe you won't need to have this complete separate manual process as well, ideally. The point is that many of you are in organizations that, that do have multiple email th threads going on, yeah. membership, meetings, uh, publications. Anything else? All right, Oliver, thank you very much. Nice.